Hello everyone. Today we're going to be talking about Boolean values. We're also going to be talking about logical expressions, conditional statements, and lastly, conditional expressions. So now that we know what we're talking about, let's begin. So now let's talk about Boolean values. Booleans are values that are valued to either true or false. In C, any value with the internal form of all zeros will be interpreted or evaluated to false. So if you think about the number 0, 0, 0 0.0, negative 0, the character uh, null terminator, so the backslash 0, but there is one kind of exception to this rule, which is negative 0, 0.0. Because of the way that we're storing floating point numbers, negative 0, 0.0 does not actually have an internal form of all zeros in most, if not all C standards. This means that it may not evaluate to false. So it might actually evaluate to true because of the sign bit. So now let's talk about the value true. True is any other value. So values that don't have the internal form of all zeros. So think about the number 2, negative 4, or the character A, something like that. So now that we know about Boolean values, let's move on into logical expressions. Logical expressions are just expressions in which we only care if the return value is either true or false. So again, rem remember our definition of true and false. Any value with an internal form of all zeros evaluates to false, and any value or any other value evaluates to true. As you can see, this leaves the definition for logical expressions quite open. So we can use something like numerical expressions, like i plus j, as logical expressions by only differentiating if the return is either 0 or not 0. We also have other operators, like relational operators, which test if a relationship between two values is true or false. These are operators like less than, less than or equal to, greater, greater than, or greater than or equal to. So let's say i is less than j would be another logical expression that uses one of these operators. And if the condition is true, we return 1. And if the condition is false, we return 0. We also have equality operators, which again just tests if a relationship holds, but this relationship has to deal with equality. For example, i is equal to j, or i is not equal to j. And again, if the condition is true, we return 1. And if the condition is false, we return 0. Now let's talk about some other operators, some other logical operators. So these are NOT, AND, and OR operators. The NOT operator takes one operand, which is a logical expression, and what it will do is it will switch its true, truth value. So if we had some logical expression A, if A were true, NOT A would be false. And if A were false, NOT A would be true. Now let's talk about the AND operator. So AND takes two operands, which are both logical expressions, and what it will do is it will perform an AND, a logical AND operation on these logical expressions. That means that A and B, if A and B were logical expressions, would return true if and only if A was true and B was true, and would return false otherwise. Lastly, let's talk about OR. OR just performs a logical inclusive OR with two logical operations or two logical statements. So if we had A or B, we would return false if and only if A was false and B was false, and we would return true otherwise. Also, another concept that is very important to keep in mind when using logical operators like AND and OR, is that C supports short circuit evaluation. So if we have a logical expression that uses these operators, like A and B, short circuit evaluation tells us that if we can tell the truth value of this operation just by using the first operand, it means we won't even have to evaluate the second operand. We can just return the result. For example, we know A and B only returns true if A is true and B is true. That is the only case. 
So if A is false, we know that A and B must be false. So we don't even look at B. This is very important to keep in mind because A and B, these logical expressions, could have side effects like A++ or I++ or a J++, something like that. So now let's move into conditional statements. Conditional statements allow us to run specific blocks of code based on if conditions are met or not. So the first conditional statement that we will be looking at is the if statement. To use the if statement, you just use the keyword if, then we follow this up by a logical expression surrounded in round brackets, and then we have an if body surrounded in curly braces. And what this will do is that we will only run what the code inside of this if body if the condition we provided or the logical expression we provided evaluates to true. But now we may also want to run some alternative chunk of code if the condition is false. In order to do this, after the if statement, we just put else and then another block of code surrounded in curly braces. And what this will do is First, we will check the if statement. We will check that the condition is true. And if we find that the condition is false, we will actually not run the code in the if body, but we will instead run the code in the else body. But what if you want to add some additional cases? So let's say you want to run some chunk of code if a variable i is less than 5, and then another case or another chunk of code if the value of i is exactly equal to 5, and then lastly, another chunk of code otherwise. To add another condition, or another case, we use an else if block. So anywhere before our else statement and after our if statement, we can put any number of else if blocks, or any number of cases. So we can say if i is less than 5, and then our if body, and then we can say else if i is equal to 5, and then an else if body, and then lastly, we have an else body. So I mentioned that in this conditional structure, you could have any number of else if blocks. So we could have any number of cases. But we have to keep in mind that in this conditional block, exactly one um, block will be executed. So let's say you have an if condition, multiple else if conditions, and then an else condition. Well, what's going to happen is first we check the if condition. If that's false, we move to the next else if condition, and we just keep cascading down until we reach else. We will always default to else. So if all the conditions we provided are false, we will run the else block. But if we come to the first condition, or if we come to a one condition, which is true, we'll only execute that block of code, and then we will exit out of this logical, or this structure. So let's say that you have multiple else if cases that are true. We will go to the first else if case that evaluates to true, we will run the code in its body, and then we will exit this L, this if, else, if, else structure. So now, let's talk about the switch statement. The switch statement is very similar to an if statement, but we only consider values from a single variable or expression. So let's say we had a program like this one. So in here, I just have a program that asks the user if they want to continue with whatever they're doing and to enter Y for yes and for no. And if the user enters a Y, then we continue. If the user enters an N, we abort. And if they enter some other value, we just say that this is not a valid option. So as you can see, in here we're only considering the value of I. We could actually do this through another conditional statement using a switch statement or a switch control block. So now let's try to restructure this program using a switch statement instead of an if statement. To use a switch statement, 
you first have to use the switch keyword. Then you follow this up by the variable or expression we're considering surrounded in round brackets, and then we can include our opening and closing curly braces. Inside of these curly braces, we can specify our cases. So to specify a case, you first use the case keyword and then the value that we're considering. So in this case, we're saying in the case where i is equal to the letter y, we will execute whatever follows this case keyword. We then follow this up by a semicolon, and then we can specify the lines that we want to run if we enter this case. After we're done specifying this block of code, we add the break keyword. This is how C knows that the case is finished and we can break out of the switch statement. And as you can see, we also have this default case. This is very much like the else keyword in the conditional if statement. So if none of the cases are entered, we automatically go into the default case. And just a word of warning, if we do not include the break statement or the break keyword at the end of your case, then the case that follows this one or the next case will start running even if the condition isn't true. Sometimes this is desired behavior and sometimes it's not. Most times it won't be. So just be careful to include this break keyword when you want the block of code to end. Lastly, I want to cover conditional expressions. So more specifically, I want to cover expressions using the ternary operator. If you remember what a ternary operator is, it's an operator that uses three operands, and we say the ternary operator because there's only one. And this is the question mark colon operator. And what this does is it takes in three operands, which are three expressions, and what this will do is it'll see if the first expression evaluates to true or false. So if the first expression evaluates to true, we will return the result from the second expression. And if it evaluates to false, we will return the result of the third expression.